And to participate in the panel discussion, I would like to invite, first of all, Yelena Lakhmatova. Также и Ула и Мати приглашаются тоже принять участие. So Ула и Мати, please participate in the panel discussion. Also, we have Людмила Рождественская. She is an IT and education uh, specialist. He is a blogger. He is a Google certified teacher. He is a teacher trainer in Estonia. And Georgi Skarabagatov. He is an adult teacher and he is a representative of the society, the European Society of Adult Teachers, IETA. Ну, начнем мы, наверное, с главного вопроса. Let us begin with the main key question. Today we are comparing our experience with the Finnish experience. They are real great, and we still have to do a lot of things to improve the things we have here. So my question is about conditions and terms which are absolutely necessary in order to integrate project activities into our school life. As a representative of uh, schools, I would like to say that our school, our school, I mean uh, the Gerbe model school, which is here, it's a school which is based on classes and disciplines. And due to this model, there are some cores, there is a structure which is very strong. And how to incorporate projects into this system? It's very difficult to solve it, in short, if unless we change this structure, the organization of school life. Of course, all teachers, they have this freedom and independence to implement project activities within the frame of their um, subjects and disciplines, and especially when it is not connected with state uh, examinations. Of course, we need the culture, the project culture. It's a long, uh, it's a serious thing to discuss, but schools, they have to be supported by school administrations. They have to be motivated and supported. And all these terms and conditions, they have to be there present, not only in the uh, form of motivation only, but also we need special formats. For example, project days in schools, or days of technologies in schools, or workshops days in schools. So uh, side by side with class discipline system, we have to supplement it. Teachers, of course, can do it within the frame of their classes. Again, the problem is with subjects which prepare students for uh, state examinations. But usually uh, projects, they might be not that. For example, if we take mathematics or informatics, IT, uh, projects are considered to be as a kind of we can integrate all and connect subjects and disciplines, but projects are perceived as being supplementary means in order to help students to create a website or to prepare a presentation and so on. But when and how do you start it in Finland? I mean, this project uh, implementing in Finlandi, Ulla, maybe, will tell us how was the realization project from the side of uh, educational ministry. No, I hear only. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, so, how do how do I we we start it? How do you start it? Yes, with this implementing of mm -hmm. projects uh, activities in schools. All right. Um, uh, you mean uh, myself or in general? In general. In general. Well, uh, I, I like to give a little bit uh, different uh, uh, approach because um, I think uh, the best way to implement it uh, is to start from the beginning, I mean. At first we need to uh, assess what are the needs of the teachers. What, what do the teachers need? And what kind of the personal needs or professional needs. And the school has to be aware of that. And then from that starts the discussion. What kind of a project do we have? And what do we need? 
and otherwise uh, implementation is i mean it uh, blows in the air because if you do something somebody outside of the school plans the project brings it in there is no uh, the ground for it so so it's really important that the headmasters and school directors knows their teachers and teachers knows themselves and what do they need and begin from that and it is the basis of a good quality project and and good results also did i answer <laughs> okay. yeah. uh, I think it's very important that projects school. were based on school needs. And then, uh, as a follow-up activity, it was involved in the work with children in schools. The same about students' projects. Uh, for children, for uh, learners to implement the outcomes of their project activities in their school life, to involve them as mediators, as helpers and assistants, for them to participate in the study process. Yes, one more additional. Out of the pupils and students, what about Finland schools? You talked uh, uh, quite a lot about this uh, joyful process. Mm -hmm. What about the results in Finland? Is it the aim, the result, or the working pro of the, the starting process, pr uh, process uh, or not? I think more and more uh, the importance is in the learning process. And of course, uh, there are several results. And the results are seen in many uh, different levels. There are, for instance, uh, personal development of the child and social skills and, and then the knowledge, what, uh, what we gain and, and so on. And there are so many things that we cannot, for instance, assess. We cannot give a mark or a number. But anyway, it has a huge impact on a child's development. And school is not for only, only having marks or in certain subjects. It also the, the things that, uh, of, that uh, is uh, for the child's development and uh, preparing children for adulthood and, and uh, life, good life. Mati, what uh, do you think about, uh, what are these clauses of uh, implementing this project studying? <coughs> what are these clauses, yeah, how to implement this project yeah, oh, st studying? So <coughs> uh, I think, uh, I, I, I think the same way that Ulla, but I think also it should, uh, when we have projects in our school, we have to have support from our director or boss, so the director will will know what we are doing for, and he he will give give us some resource to do this project work. So I think uh, the the uh, the school system must be also committed to this project work. So if we have only teachers to do this work without time and resources, so I, I, I think the impact or, or result of the project will be much less than in, in this good situation that when we have this support from the director. So I think in that way. Thank you. Uh, Георгий, вопрос к вам, uh, продолжая эту тему, но переходя уже к взрослым. А нужна ли вообще вот такая проектная деятельность в обучении взрослых? Или ведь взрослые когда-то обучались, тоже были детьми по старым образовательным системам, значит, соответственно, какие-то проблемы еще остались и, и методы обучения с того времени. Uh, yeah, I believe that problem solving and project based education is very important. We have good examples at the, at the university, at, at Tallinn University, about 40 uh, lecturers. Uh, they are involved in project based education with students from different study programs. 
uh, they work together and they have a number of different problems to analyze and to work on. Both teachers and students, they do appreciate the importance of project activities. Maybe it's too early right now to talk about the outcomes because we started in September. They are still in the process. But I think by the end of the term and by the end of the academic year, we can talk about the impact of this project-based studies at university. And uh, let's talk about joyful pedagogy. Let's ask Yula to give comments uh, about this joyful uh, pedagogy. What is the percentage, the degree to which joy has to be included into the study process? What about the results? Why do we need a joyful pedagogy and joyful education? What is the main uh, impact, uh, how much of joy has to be present in the study process. Если мы хотим... We want our uh, children to, uh, to be motivated. It, it should be the aim for every single uh, teacher to, to, to motivate the children to study, to be inspired, to be interested in, and to feel good in the school and not bad in the school. Then uh, the, here is the answer. I mean, and if we feel good, we are interested in, we are motivated, we, uh, we, uh, we take care of each other, we, uh, and, and so on. And, and uh, the, the methods are, are for that. And also to, to, give, uh, to improve the creativity. And uh, if we improve the creativity, it helps in problem solving. And in, in every single subject, we need kind of a problem solving. And, and this is uh, improving. And yes. And uh, we have made uh, evaluation uh, also. The Finnish people in general like to evaluate a lot. So when we were uh, collecting the methods and we were testing them in the, in the, among the teachers, uh, and they were very positive really positive, and also the impact in the, in the school, in the, the improvement of the teaching methods in the classroom, but also the, there were less bullying and all, almost nothing, no bullying at all. And, and from the beginning of the programs, before the teachers started to use the methods, there were a lot of bullying because teachers didn't pay attention. They thought that okay, they can start the school year like that, and uh, they didn't pay attention, for, for instance, to getting to know each other and, and what kind of personalities uh, uh, the, the, the pupils are. And pupils didn't know each other. And it was uh, amazing because after, uh, when we started the program and we gave training to the, also to the pupils, and they said, oh, now we know each other. And they have been three years together. So it was, <laughs> why in the world we don't pay attention into that? It, it, it doesn't take too much time. So it's uh, also to bring a good atmosphere for the learning. Hmm. Людмила, можно вас тоже прокомментировать, прокомментировать uh, вопрос радостной педагогики? So the question, uh, your comments about joyful pedagogy. Uh, it reminds me of uh, Suvorov's uh, statement. It's difficult to study, but easy to fight. Many teachers, they uh, use it, it's in our culture, so it has to be very difficult to study. Hard work, it's very important to overcome your problems, and it uh, uh, does not follow this idea of the Finnish model, to work hard in order to succeed. Uh, you see, uh, any kind of a project, any project-based learning, uh, it is uh, a part uh, it is something which has to be a part of our culture. If we do not include it into our educational culture, into our schools, into our learning environment, so first of all, we have to change ourselves. If we are different, if we change ourselves, our learning and teaching environment, it will be a follow-up uh, thing. If I change myself and acquire new things and I work on my personal development, I want to become better, that uh, it is better and brighter and more comfortable around me, then I will change the environment. 
it might be taken not that seriously, but uh, to be more serious, I would like to say that we need certain terms and conditions and methods. Each project, they have outcomes. It's not the um, learning outcome, but a product, a real uh, product which has to be shown to uh, people after the completion of the project. So, for example, if we have an exhibition of project works, it's a good event, it's nice. And we can borrow this idea from European schools. Uh, I used to visit different types of schools, and I know how it works in England and other countries. All these visits, when we visit other schools in different countries, we see different variations of the learning environment. Uh, so uh, when we have a uh, knowledge transfer based uh, teaching, it's one learning environment and you feel uncomfortable when you realize uh, different methods. We have to change the culture itself. Lena, what do you think about this joyful uh, pedagogy and the learning? I know that a person learns better and studies better when he does it with pleasure. We learn more when it is a joyful process. Uh, joy, uh, what kind of a joy we have? Uh, this is a joy of uh, discovery, of getting something new. For example, I couldn't speak English. Now I know that I can speak English. They can uh, participate and present in English, that I can do it. So this l joy of uh, learning about yourself, something new, the joy of new discoveries and projects, they are the ways of giving it to you. The main joy of discovery, that's the main joy we get from these activities. Please raise your hands how many school principals we have in the audience. Maybe we'll discuss quite a touchy uh, question. So teachers who are here in the uh, room, maybe they can think, OK, it's great. We can invent something real, beautiful, and great. We'll uh, go to our school principal, and we may say, OK, let's decide. Let's count how many birds are outside, and we will use our math class to count birds outside the class. The question is, what would be the reaction from our uh, school principal? Principle. He might not give you a permission to do it. So how to communicate and to collaborate with school administration and school management? Let's ask our guests or our school principals, maybe. Our school managers, uh, can you share your ideas about this kind of activity with us? Can you give your comments? Have you ever been in a situation when your teachers approached you with some real good ideas that they want to realize and to include into our study pros some interesting ideas? Svetlana Vladimirovna from uh, Kochtla Yarvi Russian Gymnasium. I am a principal. Of course, I can say yes. Yes, we are supportive. We always do it and we implement. The question is whether all teachers are ready uh, to implement and to change and to change themselves to adapt new methods to change the study process itself. Uh, integration, cooperation, collaboration, the inclusion of uh, IT technologies and outdoor teaching methods, we all know about them. The question is the readiness of our teachers to implement them. Maybe some teachers would like to share their great ideas uh, to uh, how it was uh, Welcome to their, in their schools. Don't be shy. Please share your right. Unfortunately, we don't have Irene Kassar is not here, the representative of the Ministry of Education Research. But we asked this question uh, on the phone, and we got her reply because we could uh, foresee it uh, to be one of the key questions to discuss the support from the side of the school administration. But the system in education, uh, it works differently. Uh, the system, you know, uh, it is supported from principles. Uh, have you heard that uh, mathematics and physics they are not going to be a separate subjects? In Finland, they will be integrated into other subjects. It will be on the project-based education, so it's great. So Irena, when I asked her this question, she said that there are, of course, some programs which are initiated by the Ministry of Education and Research of Estonia. 
uh, we cannot say that we are too far from uh, the all advances and pluses of the Estonian, of the Finnish educational system. Our system of education uh, does a lot in order to change the focus uh, to support teachers in schools uh, at the level of uh, school management. Are there any questions? Yes, we do have a question. Please wait for a mic. Good afternoon. My question to Ule. Irene Irmalay, my name. I'm a teacher of adult school. The system which is in Finland. For us, the study process is not only the transfer of knowledge, but it is also a collaborative activity which is connected uh, with the construction of the whole process of the study. My question is about planning. Usually in the traditional system, uh, teachers on the basis of the national curricula uh, creates uh, his or her syllabus and then he or she tries to find how to realize it. Uh, how students participate in it, what kind of cooperative activities might be there. But the starting point, the starting uh, uh, point of this activity, do you have uh, a special group in school, uh, people who have these ideas in the initiative group, when they discuss how to realize it, and then uh, they launch it, and uh, how they uh, make changes and update their program in the course of its realization? Uh, how students who participate more actively, how they are supported. So this planning activities to realize projects, how it is performed in uh, your case. There is PhD not my case. So I am not uh, 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 working uh, in a schools as a teacher. But I can answer your question. So for instance, if we want to start active learning in the school and, and change the school system to be more active uh, and more using more learning environments, it doesn't mean that the teacher's work is more easier. It, it's totally different way of thinking. And in, then I know that in Finland, the teachers are supposed to be also researchers. They need to uh, update their knowledge all the time. And, uh, and uh, if you start active learning, you have to do a lot of planning. You have to prepare a lot. You might uh, have to, you don't use necessarily books, but you need to have materials. And you have to, uh, have to organize the students' work, although the students might be working individually, but teachers are coaching. They are guiding this work, and they need to ha have the skills to be able to guide. So, so it's the different way of thinking entire process. But then, uh, as a result, there has to be good learning results because children and young people they enjoy learning. They they really and and if they don't learn, they are complaining. They want to learn and they want to achieve something. And the parents are also watching what in the world they are doing. They, they need to see that the children are learning. But, uh, but it's a different way of thinking, totally different from the beginning. And it's based on research, latest uh, research in every field. And uh, yeah. Thank you. Is Hello, my name is Valeria. My question is, if we talk about schools or higher educational institutions, when you allied with a particular educational institution, but here we have people who are adults who want to participate in projects, we have two questions. The first one, how to find time, uh, how to find money and opportunities to participate in projects? 
On the second question to the Estonian and Finnish uh, side, where to go to find this information? I can uh, perceive the answer that to be bold, you know, ask questions and find opportunities. There are many people who are ready to join projects. Uh, Adults, they don't know how to start, how to join project activity, where to go. Where do people go in Finland to join project activities? Adults. It's about adults and we'll ask Georgi to answer this question. Thank you for the question, Valeria. Uh, the answer has to be absolutely concrete. How to find time and uh, Efforts. Of course, you have to evaluate your own resources. Where to go to answer this question? You have to go to special uh, institutions which coordinate uh, project activities, international project activities. For example, Archimedes Foundation, uh, there are a lot of tenders and they get financial, uh, financial support from different sources and they have a lot of information about projects uh, which uh, are financed by them and where you can participate. Participate. They always help and give consultations uh, how to write projects and how to apply for participation. On the other hand, adults, if they have uh, needs, if they have wishes, they are themselves to find ways and to be volunteers and to join any groups they know about or to become members of project activities. Uh, there are um, civic organizations or civic initiatives organizations in Estonia. We have them. They are also financed in terms of project activities and they can also support you and provide you with necessary information about participation in adult projects. Okay, uh, I have uh, some ideas for this. Um, Every single method, what I am training and my trainers are training, are very cheap. You don't need big budgets for that. And we select uh, such a methods that you don't need money. Even the poorest school can implement them. And the idea is that all the materials to make the, uh, the exercises can be found from the school, at the school level. But then, it's your own creativity. Create the teachers and improve the creati creativity level to use, for instance, recycling materials or whatever. And you don't need much money, but you have to change your thinking. And then you need creativity for that. Yes. Add, uh, this um, ability to find uh, financial support or to join any kind of a project, it has to be supported at the level of school education. Let us say last week there was uh, published an annual report uh, by the Ministry of Education and according to the report 29% of uh, residents in Estonia at the age from 25 to 64, they don't have any uh, professional uh, skills uh, 210,000 people who haven't realized themselves uh, who are not sure about what they really need in order to develop professionally it's about professional initiatives professional activities or civic initiatives the same so to acquire these skills not just to be employed but to find something which is for you this is what we have to keep in mind. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Use this opportunity to ask questions to ask our experts. Irina Pahrama, Narske Soldina Gymnasium. Yesterday we got the results, PISA results, and Estonia is one of the best countries in terms of the results of PISA. What is your opinion? Is it due to the implementation of new methods in our schools? Or it's a result of studies outside school? 
My opinion is that Uh, last PISA results, uh, they were kind of a surprise for our Russian uh, colleagues. And I, I was asked this question. Was it because in our textbooks we have PISA type uh, uh, exercises or uh, because schools are, enjoy more freedom nowadays and flexibility? I would rather say that uh, the our good results in Estonia, uh, the answer is that our schools are more independent. They have freedom and they can experiment. Uh, they do not use it to its full potential. And school managers, they are not that aware of the opportunities they have. But in general, teachers are not that uh, stuck in, what, in where they are. They uh, have their freedom and independence to choose methods and materials. Uh, this is a kind of a philosophical reply to your question. I would rather talk about uh, and comment critical comments. Uh, Marty Haynes from the University of Tallinn, he commented uh, the results. And when we look at points, not the results, and we analyze statistics and the error correction, if we analyze it, uh, it's not the point for us to be that proud of real big and good results. The first two countries which are leaders on the list, Singapore and Japan. I cannot talk about all schools, but uh, uh, in those schools, in many of them, uh, they study a lot. It is a knowledge-based society. And Finland, uh, we've d been discussing its experience. It takes only the sixth place. So again, what are... Uh, results and comments. Marty Haynes, he said that uh, if we analyze PISA results, uh, because in parallel there is a survey among teachers on methods of education, he said that there are many teachers in Estonia and in, in, in Russian medium schools, teachers uh, who I have this knowledge transfer model, so they know how to transfer knowledge. And they don't use uh, constructivist methods uh, to construct knowledge and it's uh, the result is more uh, about uh, paradoxes uh, the results and the way how we teach so our analysis is important what I like about the uh, in the approach uh, which was uh, mentioned uh, in uh, by our colleagues teachers are researchers that's what I really love this is very important and very difficult to do any other questions about PISA results? Ule has already said that, that in Finland it's a process. Uh, education in Finland, it uh, aims at the process of education, not the results. The whole process has to be uh, enjoyable for both teachers and students. And teachers, they take their own place. What's the difference uh, between the studies in Estonia and Finland? I can say that when you study in Estonia, the aim is the result. Is it true? And in Finland, uh, the aim is it's a learner-centered teaching. The aim is uh, that uh, a student may become a happy person in the future to find him or herself and to be a successful person in life. That's why the focus is on the process of teaching and learning. The process to bring this small, uh, this young learner uh, to the results and outcomes when he is an adult who is happy, who knows himself and who finds his place in his world. My question is, so um, we all are living human beings. What is the result of our life? This is a global question to answer. What is the result of our life? What is there in between uh, life and death? And what is there in between? It's not that important. If you uh, compare our system of education, uh, the system here, which is aimed at the result, it may be compared with the whole idea of life and death. 
Uh, now at the end of our panel discussion, everyone will have an opportunity to express his or her opinion how individual development of his learners is supported and what is understood by the term individual development. It's easier for me to say because uh, uh, our system, uh, learner-centered uh, system of learning uh, with adult education is very successful. Uh, it is based our system on uh, our students' needs and, our, and their wishes and practical issues they have. In addition, Yelena, in her introductory uh, welcome speech, she uh, mentioned, and I would like to remind you, that uh, such processes as self-reflection and uh, uh, feedback and uh, cooperation with teachers and students, they, I believe, are key or uh, core processes to make our study process effective and uh, uh, for us to understand what we learn, why we learn it, and what are the results. I have different types of activities. I work in school, I uh, teach students and teachers, but there is one more area of my activities uh, where I organize uh, e-learning uh, classes. Uh, for three years I have already been in this e-learning uh, module system. There are a lot of opportunities uh, with e-learning for independent and individual development. But uh, when you talk about e-learning, uh, you have to understand that uh, this knowledge-centered model is uh, not the one for e-learning. It is a multitasking uh, module. You have different tasks which sometimes are more difficult or to perform, are more difficult to assess with uh, points. But this uh, model allows a person who uses it to involve himself or herself and to work at the level of his uh, skills and knowledge he has and he possesses. He relies on him or herself. So this is differentiation without uh, differentiation as such. So as it was in the old times, three envelopes, one for a clever guy, one for an average guy, and this one where it is written in big letters, uh, a fool. So it will be the third envelope. So we differentiate students according to their skills. And of course, with the third group, which are so to say fools, there is no motivation if they are uh, marked like this. So when we talk about e-learning and other uh, assignments, we differentiate them and they are real individual and they support. There are a lot of opportunities. Creativity, uh, when you construct such courses, it doesn't matter at which level, e-learning or open university or open models, so it doesn't matter. Be creative. <coughs> so, in, in my thoughts, Nowadays, teaching is more like coaching, and it's uh, it's more like boosting different types of uh, student skills. And you have to know your students, and you have to uh, give different types of uh, exercise in different type of learners, and and you have to also. Remember that every human, who, who, human being want to be part of in some kind of group. So, like Ulla's uh, joyful pedagogy. So you have to take your students in part of your teaching group and make in in that way this learning in environment joyful so that is my my final thoughts about this yes and uh, well i'm thinking of all those different learners so that everybody in every class we have a, a very different kind of learners there are slow learners there are quick learners there are 
uh, uh, children, young people who are dif uh, different interest level and, and different backgrounds and, and so on. But there is also always 40% of us who are kinesthetic. So those kinesthetic people, they have difficulties in sitting still and, and listening. They go like this, and they go like that, and they are they're dropping things, and, and they, they are napping at the school, they are making noise. And, and if there are, happen to be a lot of those uh, kinesthetic children in your classroom, you are in a trouble if you, you are using only the, the traditional methods. Because it's in their nature, they cannot control themselves. They need activities, and they need to, to move. And that's why kinesthetic learning is really important that we use uh, active methods to help them in their learning process. It helps them individual development. I think that our life would be very sad and if we consider it to be as uh, with the result of one to be this, I am very positive and I think that uh, the main task is to develop whatever is possible to develop and whatever is possible to discover in yourself. I think that uh, support of individual development is uh, to help a person to see uh, what he has. It, it can be via civic activities or sport activities, it doesn't matter, but to find the better self in yourself. An exclamation mark at the end. Thank you very much to all participants of the panel discussion.